So the Cloakmasters have begun to work to assassinate the Shades or find magical means to control their minds. Hail and well met and welcome back to another Realms Lower video. I am here with the original creator of the Forgotten Realms himself, Sir Ed Greenwood. And uh, currently D&D is in around the late 1490s DR and a lot of people often ask us, what is going on with this thing that I love in the realms around that time period? So you wanna explain a little bit about what today's video is? Sure, so there's the news, the current clack, the news and rumors that's on everybody's lips, and then there's the secret stuff. So we're gonna take a look at factions, cabals, and secret societies, and what they're doing behind the scenes. And if you are enjoying these Realms Lore videos, please be sure to check out patreon.com slash edgreenwood. If you become a protector of the realms there, it will continue to support us being able to make videos here for you. So please enjoy this video about factions, cabals, and secret societies in the realms in the late 1490s DR. Checking in with some factions, cabals, and secret societies. What's afoot behind the scenes in the late 1490s DR? The Zentarin. This widely known organization began as a way to enrich its members by establishing the shortest trade route between the metals-rich mines of the Moon Sea and the markets of the Sword Coast. Certain current members are seeking once again, this is a frequent Zent goal, to create an even shorter way than the Anorak crossing, or the slightly longer Stonelands route by establishing a linked chain of magical gates, portals, between Zent-controlled citadels in the Moon Sea area and not far from Waterdeep. The Moon Sea end will almost, will most likely be the Citadel of the Raven, but some alternatives are being prepared in the Dagger Hills by rebuilding Arvel's Tusk, the ruined shell of an old robber baron's keep, and in Whitehorn, where a new fortress and walled goods yards would have to be built to the east of the existing settlement. Candidate sites of the Waterdavian end include Nightstone, Jalkoon, and Seacomber, all of which would require building new fortresses, stables, and goods yards. Red Larch has been dropped as a possible site because of the recent violence in the Sumbar Hills involving four cults devoted to the Elder Ele Elemental Eye see Princes of the Apocalypse. Red Wizards of Thay. Hmm. The Red Wizards are magically powerful because of the Athora, a gigantic rock that floats in a cavern inside Thaymout and radiates mighty magic. Because of it, Thay will always be a land where many individuals have the gift. Magic items and spells are more easily created than elsewhere, and wizards will swiftly rise to master him real power. Recently, one of the renegade red wizards who fled Thay when Zastam tightened his hold on power in 1432 DR, a necromancer by the name of Angthlas Drund, used a new necromantic spell of his devising to ride the minds of liches, hopping as ascensions from one Thayan lich to another to reach the heart of Thaymount where as a wraith-like drifting amorphous shadow, he embraced the Athora and drank of it to gain real power, which he used to remain hidden from Tam and the memories of at least six of the Zulkirs who currently rule Thay under the control of Zastam as he wormed his way into those six mines and left behind controls that will allow him to either command the liches or to immobilize them, and so thwart some future plan of Tam's. Right now, he's biding his time for a dark day for Zastam yet to come. The Cult of the Dragon The deity Velsharun was utterly destroyed by the symbol, but his worship continues, and his clergy receive spells and divine guidance that guides this cult. No one but Eo, Mistra, and Jurgal know that Jurgal is the deity granting clergy of Velsharun their spells and guiding visions, and therefore controlling the cult of the dragon. Jurgal is a whimsical individual who delights in tormenting Bane, Baal, and Merkel by thwarting their plans, humiliating them, 
and demonstrating his own effortless succession manipulations. Measured against the recurring failures, Jurgle intends to nudge the cult into entertaining rulers he dislikes, brute tyrants and mad failures like Zastam all across the realms by having the cult seek to create Draculiches in the heart of the cities and land such rulers rule to rise and challenge them. Beyond this, Jurgle intends to humble Shar and Siric, but hasn't yet decided on just how. Perhaps the cult of the dragon can become assassins dedicated to eliminating Sharon and Sirius' clergy as fast as they can be anointed. The Twisted Rune Just as this organization influences and manipulates many to do its bidding unawares, so as to steer politics in Kalimshan and Tethyr, the Runemaster Liches who lead this organization are unaware that they are being influenced and manipulated by the well-hidden death ty tyrant Ochlach, who has developed spells that work on Lich's souls. Ochlach is magically mightier than most death tyrants, moves about often cloaked by powerful magical disguises and a dark drifting mist cloud that contains a surrounding bodyguard of zombie beholders under Ochlach's control and has already located the jarred souls of Rangon, Kartak Spellseer, and Jimhahana, and is subtly influencing them to turn their schemes and enmity away from Waterdeep, Undermountain, the Aronsons, and Halaster, and against a renewed presence and control in Tethyr and Kalimshan, with a particular interest in reducing Kalimshan to eventual civil war. The Emerald Enclave. No true Enclave member can be good or evil. They cleave firmly to neutrality. But the highest Enclave leaders, the Elder Circle of Three, often meet in secret with good or evil beings and groups to sway or bargain with them to act to further the greatest tenets of the Enclave. The order of nature must be preserved in all its iterations. Any force that would disrupt that order must be defeated, and the Enclave will always aid those left fatigued or suffering injury. Recently, the Elder Circle made a bargain with an evil adventuring band, Tharvrux Talons out of Nonsal in Termish, to humble those currently in power in Nimtes, the Duke and his Council of Burgers, who have begun aggressively logging the mountainsides west of the city and terracing them for farming, already causing several destructive mudslides. The Talons have interpreted these orders as slay and replace. Other Elder Circle bargains have recently been made, but the wider realms isn't aware of them yet. The Harpers After she rescued several of his clergy and nursed them back to health, Azuth recently granted Storm Silverhand a personal boon. She can now see and hear through any Harper pin she concentrates on anywhere on Toril, and so scry afar and become aware of the doings and fates of distant Harpers. She and fellow chosen Amaroon White Wave are expanding the network of Harper gates portals across Faroon and even to Orth, as her friendship with the mage Warden Kanan has strengthened and flourished in the wake of her tending him back to sanity. He, Elminster, and Storm are now very close friends, perhaps intimate, and certainly Warden Kanan trusts Storm more than he has any other person since his childhood. Warden Kanan keeps Earth end of these gates secret from others in his world, though one of them is very likely in a tower of the Obsidian Citadel, and another may be in an unassuming upper room of an elderly weaver's home shop in the Artisan's Quarter in the city of Greyhawk. The Lord's Alliance. Rumors are spreading throughout the courts of members of this alliance that an unidentified alliance member has offered freedom and rewards to certain incarcerated inmates of Revel's End in return for carrying out a dangerous mission. The nature of this mission is violent, it is an expedition, and, or so the rumors run, it may be directed at one or more Alliance members. 
Suspicions as to who is behind this offer are swirling around Lord Neverember of ne Neverwinter, and the Harpels of Longsaddle, and Water Baron Nestra Ruthiol of Yartar. The truth, according to Olminster, is that Neverember and Relroy Harpel, a rogue uncle of the family, are pursuing quite separate courtships of Revels and inmates. Never Ember wants Laryl brought low so he can triumphantly return to Waterdeep as open lord. Something L believes the majority of the nobles of the city, to say nothing of the majority of masked lords, will never accept, even if Laryl conveniently vanished tomorrow. Relroy Harpel wants Never Ember gone and the incomplete Dread Ring near Neverwinter seized so he and the other Harpels can use it to invade Thay and shatter the power of the Red Wizards forever, destroying Zastam and, quote, all liches and other undead wizards there, Zulkirs or Night Soil Carters. Relroy would then rule Thay as a benevolent regent, as a land that stopped making war on its neighbors and instead became a cradle of wizardly development, ushering in a new golden age across Toril. Elminster deems Relroy a crazed fool, but his plans and dreams are magnificent, and if they don't go too badly wrong, I might even aid them. The Order of the Gauntlet Certain members of this order have decided that corrupt rulers in Shir Talar and the cities of the Tashalar, who have accumulated great wealth in personal vaults through excessive taxation and seizures from citizens they rule, and others who come within their reach, are guilty of evil acts, and they should be overthrown and the Order should distribute such wealth as equitably as possible among their populaces, but then withdraw and take no part in deciding which new rulers arise, even if there is local strife and bloodshed. Not all Order members agree with this view, but elements of this Order are moving to suspect cities to determine the truth, locations of the vaults, and how to defeat the tyrannical forces of these rulers. The Shadow Thieves Certain cloakmasters among this far-flung organization have gone rogue, deeming the shades of the guild's ruling council had strayed so far from just enough thievery to live on while nurturing local communities and marks so the shadow lifestyle could comfortably continue into high-profile politics and becoming a worldwide power that they were no longer true shadow thieves. So the Cloakmasters have begun to work to assassinate the Shades or find magical means to control their minds. Some of these Cloakmasters are working with ambitious illithids. Uh, the name Salukrul has surfaced of a Mind Flayer sorcerer dwelling in secret under Athkatla in Om and Beholders, notably a magic item crafting Beholder Mage, known as Eilis Yurkel, who lurks somewhere in or under the Troll Claws, east-northeast of Baldur's Gate and west of Trio. And there you have a brief look at what's going on behind the scenes with factions, secret societies, and other schemers in the realms today. Hi, welcome back to Realm Speak, and this time around we're doing this. This, this time, is Kazme. Kazme, which is the fly demon, or a type of demon that we associate with flies because of the large compound eyes. Um, there should actually, when you see that, um, there was originally an accent, as in, as we see in French, over the last E, so it's Kazme, Kazme. And Kazme, they are the unpleasant demons. They are like real flies. They walk in all sorts of stuff. So they contaminate what they land on. Because they are a creeping cancer. The creeping cancer Kazme. So, yes. Um, critters to be aware, aware of and stay away from. Yeah, Kazme. Yeah. Oh, sh Okay. <laughs> Anyway, um, <clears throat> hail and well met and well f 